have great news today. Every human is one decision away from receiving Jesus into their life. And we're so honored to be here today to share him with you. I'm Amy Schaefer. I'm here with Tom and Anna. And we are on hope today, Anna. Yes. We're bringing hope. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And we have a wonderful guest with us today. Her name is Shauna Pilgreen, and she wrote this book. It's called Translating Jesus. So we're going to be talking about the language of culture and the language of Christians. And, you know, if you've been around for very long, you kind of get the sense that our languages can be a little bit different. Sometimes <laughs> they can clash and be misunderstood. And so she's going to help us understand how to share our faith with non-believers in a way that is, does not turn them away, but draws them towards the heart of God. I, I love, I, I watched the teaching she did where she can really speak teenager really well. I mean, I don't know, do you guys, I mean, you guys have teenagers right now, do you really speak teenager oh, well? this is gonna be the lit, this show is lit, it's hype, it's <laughs> all the rage, go. it's trending right now. This, <laughs> yes. this program is so like relevant mm -hmm. and we're so authentic and yes, we know the whole language okay. of teenagers because we have teenagers, oh. but here's the deal. We're Christians, we're believers, and we actually want to be relevant, Anna, right. to the world. I mean, we can't be the weird people in our own, the, hallelujah, praise the Lord. And they're like, what are you, which God? Who are you right. praising? What are you talking about? You know, we've got to be relevant because Jesus wants us to be the salt and the light. He wants us to draw people closer to him. Yeah. So I think we're gonna learn a lot today. I'm excited. I know, I think so too. And the one thing that Shauna talked about was how kindness, just kindness towards people gets their attention and it can open doors to op uh, open a conversation. Yeah, absolutely. There's so many different ways. And we just wanna always remind you that we have prayer partners. Maybe you need to make a connection today. Maybe you need someone to pray with you. We, we believe in prayer, we believe that God wants to make that connection with you. And we have prayer partners standing by that if you want to pray with someone today, they'll be glad to pray with you. You can, you can give them a call there and get someone who, that's their ministry. That's why they're here. That's why they want to pray with you. Well, right now we're gonna need prayer as we go into Stump the Host. Okay, so you know how it goes, right? Stump the host, the, the, uh, the, the producers, the mean producers here try to embarrass us on TV <laughs> with questions that we may not know the answer to, and uh, we need your help too, so we want you to play along. We have not seen these questions, and we hope we know the answer. Here's the first one. What prophet was sent as a missionary to the Ninevites? Jonah. Jonah. Yeah. This, yes. this, oh, easy. There we go. Yay. Okay. Easy peasy with the first they one. They started us off easy. <laughs> All right. Yep. It is Jonah. It's a great story. And it's also at sound, Sight and Sounds Theater sometimes <laughs> where I saw it. All right. Okay. Second question. The belt and the armor of God represents what? Truth. Truth. Hey, you guys the are good. The belt of truth, right. which oh. holds everything oh. together. Yay. Awesome. You know, yes. I was struggling yes. with that. You know, I don't know. I'm glad that you, you guys know. You were not. I was. I was, I was starting to go through the, 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 all the armor, you know, and it was like, yeah, it didn't just come a, right out. You yeah. Know? Well, I just know that because it holds the whole armor together when it's right. the belt, belt of, truth, of truth, the word of God. Yeah. Very good. good. Okay. okay. Here's the last one. What Athenian judge was converted under Paul's preaching. Here's another book of Acts one, which I think I have the book of Acts memorized. And Man, then again, every time you give me a book of Acts question, I can't. Athens was converted I don't know preaching. that one. Oh, do we call our lifeline our guest? Oh, we could. Oh, do we sure. dare? Let's, let's we'll call in our guest, in. Shauna. <laughs> what Athenian judge? We're giving you was the hard converted one. under Paul's preaching. Why is, was Felix the judge? Who was he in Paul's story? Felix was, he was, a, a, he was a Roman uh, proconsul or something, a Roman, you know, like head of the oh, Romans. I don't think it was Felix. 
We don't have any other guesses here. Can we have a hint? <laughs> Can you give us the first oh, we're, we're, letter? We're, we're appealing to the producers now. <laughs> first letter, producers, first letter. D. 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 It's not helping us. <laughs> Uh, Dumb okay. and dumber. That, that starts with me too. We're not. Okay. We're, uh, I think we're. I we're, 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 we're drawing a blank here. Oh. Oh. There we go. So Dionys wow. Dionysius. Oh. oh, okay. Okay. That's easy to remember. It is an axe. <laughs> I will hide my face in shame. Anyway, thank you for playing along. Dionysius. <laughs> We. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I do want to mention to you that you can go to Hope Today, our, our page uh, at uh, ctvn.org, and go to our Hope Today page and see the answers, especially the one we didn't get. Yes. Anna. <laughs> Correct. All right. Well, our guest today, Shauna Pilgreen, wrote a book called Translating Jesus. She joins us to share how we can share our faith in a language that our culture can understand. So Shauna, al Shauna along with her husband, co-lead Epic Church, a multi-ethnic congregation in the heart of San Francisco. Shauna, welcome to today. Did Good I morning. Welcome to, today? Welcome to Hope Today. Welcome to Hope Today. <laughs> we do know the name of our show, too. We may not know Welcome. Dionysus, but we That's do know great. the name of our show. <laughs> Welcome to today. Welcome to That's Hope great. Today. I think I need that extra cup of coffee. But, Shada, I would love if you would start off by sharing with us a bit about the two different languages. You say there is the language of Christians, and then there's the language of culture. Absolutely. Well, I think uh, I just was proof there, or all four of us were proof there as we were trying to figure out who was that judge in the, in the book of Acts. It's like, there is a language of, of Christianity. It's rooted in scripture. That's where we get our knowledge. That's how we speak the language of Christ. But there's another language. And I think so often as Christians, we get so fixated on learning how to speak Christianity and how to connect with God and the people of God that we forget how to connect and relate to our culture. And just like you said, Anna, it's two different languages. And the way we learn culture is by paying attention. We never completely disconnect from the culture that we're actually moving about in every day, but we stay connected, we listen, we pay attention because that's how we get to speak the language of culture. Mm -hmm. And you call it being bilingual, right? Yes. Okay. Exactly. And you also talk about how the language of Jesus is prayer. So when we're talking about understanding these two languages, where does that language of prayer come in? Absolutely. And I know we're all learning. And I don't know, I've never met a Christian that says, I have figured prayer out. I'm an expert at this. Rather, just like prayer. We're constantly learning. We're growing in it as we connect with God. But prayer is not supposed to be something that we just keep to our prayer closets or we just keep at the table. But Jesus is with us. Prayer brings Jesus into everything. So as we're moving throughout our day, we bring Jesus into every situation, every conversation with prayer. So if the language of culture is paying attention and the language of Christ is prayer, what happens when we bring these together? We begin to speak two languages. So um, a famous evangelist and pastor, John Stott, teaches the art of double listening. So double listening is this. It's me sitting or standing. Maybe I'm standing in a, in a line uh, at the grocery store. And I'm aware of the Holy Spirit. I'm aware of his voice. Uh, I'm connected to God that way. But at the same time, I'm connected and listening to the cashier telling me about her day or telling me about a sore arm. And so we're becoming bilingual as we're listening to both the Holy Spirit, listening to the person that we're engaging with in cultures so that we can better communicate God's love in a language that they understand. Yeah. And so you share a lot of great stories in your book and you break it into three places where Jesus spent time, the gate, the cross and the table. So let's start with the gate. What is the gate and what's one of your favorite stories from the gate? Yes, Anna, I love telling stories because stories just, what? It just brings me to a place where like we 
we're all having these stories every single day. And I tell stories to say that this is contagious. The more you start bringing Jesus into conversations, like we all can do this. We are, I call it in the book, we are everyday evangelists. Every single day we have the opportunity to bring Jesus into conversations. And nine times out of 10, I finish that conversation or I'll walk away from it. I could have done that differently. Or I feel like I could have done that better. Or I hope I get another opportunity to connect with that person. But at the gate, the gate represents the marketplace. It's where we're at every day. And we're all in a variety of places. And so, um, and I can't remember if you said, like, do I to describe all three? But the, that's what the gate is. The cross is connecting with our Christian community, our church, and um, people who believe what we believe. And then the table are those moments where we find ourselves where both culture and Christianity collide. And then when you're at the gate, you have this great story about Charleston, who you met in Marshalls of all places, which is one of my favorite stores. Can you tell us about Charleston? Yes, I, I sometimes I just pray that I'll get an opportunity to meet Charleston again, but he and I both just found ourselves in Marshalls, but we were there for two very different reasons. And I was um, between meetings, I had stepped into Marshalls and you know, just a little bit of shop therapy going on. And while I'm going through the, the women's dress rack, uh, Charleston, of course, I didn't know him at the time, but he bumps up to me. And Charleston, I realized, is packing some of the store goods into his, like, several layers of clothes that he had on. And I freeze because I realize, like, while I might be shopping for something, I'm completely distracted beside the man who is attempting to shoplift at Marshall's. And, but at the same time, I think that God used this to get my attention. Like I believe wholeheartedly, hindsight is everything. I was there for one reason and God had something for me to tell Charleston. So when I say I froze, I mean, my feet would not move. My hands would not move. My brain stopped thinking about the dress that looked lovely on the rag. And I cannot do anything until I did what felt so pressing on my heart. And it was to tell Charleston how much Jesus loved him. Now, these are not three words that I tell every person that I meet throughout the day. But in that moment, I was convinced that Charleston needed to hear that. And so just loud enough for he and I to hear it, I said, sir, I don't know what you're going through, but I'm supposed to tell you that Jesus loves you. He loves you so much. And up to this point, I've only engaged with the backside of him. And he turned and looked at me and gave me the most sincere thank you I've ever received. And he just said, thank you. I needed to hear that. Thank you so much. And at that moment, I began to be able to move again. And my eye spot, this beautiful gray velvet dress. So I take it off the rack. I head to the dressing room. And when I come out of the dressing room, by the way, the dress fit perfectly. But when I come out of the dressing room, he's standing right there. And I don't want you to think scary. I just want you to think that God was up to something. And he begins to tell me that he has not heard how much Jesus loves him for so many years. He remembers his grandmother telling him that as he grew up and he's just hit, he's had a really rough, a really rough life. And I just connected with him. I pointed him to where our church was, which is actually across the street from Marshall's, um, invited him to come. And as I go to pay for the dress, I find myself checking out with a cashier. And this cashier is the one who I knew had talked to Charleston earlier. And she told me what you told him caused him to take everything that he was shoving in his jacket and put it in the basket and walk away. And the cashier ended up being the store manager. And she told me that once he told her what I had said, that Jesus loves you, the store manager affirmed that in him because she too is a Christ follower. And so my favorite moment of that day is that the store manager, Maggie, myself, and Charleston were all three at the gate doing three various different things. But God used myself and Maggie to convey one simple truth to Charleston. And I'm just going to believe by faith that it's changed his life. Those three simple words, Jesus loves you. 
Wow, I mean, how simple and how wonderful. I love that story. I, I've heard a, another story of yours uh, about your uh, Lyft driver when you, uh, you took a, a Lyft one time. And uh, could you just share that one? I think his name was Aaron. Yes, that's what I call him in the book. Tom, it was, I mean, I can't think of how many people have ride share stories because uh, I don't know of another place that's happening in society right now where two people, two strangers enter into a, you know, a ride share for a little bit of time and have an opportunity to talk. But at the same time, this can also happen when you're getting your hair cut or maybe not so much at the dentist, but these opportunities happen all day long where you get to chat with strangers. We get to chat with strangers. Well, on this particular day, living in the city, we had one car and um, my husband and the kids had already taken the car to church. So I call a lift and Aaron picks me up in his Camry and he asks me where I'm headed and I tell him to church. And so we went, we went there both in conversation and in directions. And so on the drive, he begins to tell me that he's a religious person and that he wants to raise his kids to love humanity and to do good things. And I began to tell him that it's because of my faith. That's how we are raising our kids in the city and that God is at the center of everything we do. Well, we just continue to share things that we have in common. He's from the Middle East, and we both were just talking about how we just are very much against anyone that's practicing evil in the name of religion. And immediately the conversation shifted as we passed by an Airbnb billboard in our city. And at the time, the billboard said, um, help or support Afghan refugees. And he pointed to that sign before we exited off the freeway, and he said, that's where my family's from. And he's doing everything he can with the paperwork to get them out of there. And I could just tell, I could tell he was very heavy hearted. And I said, Hey, Aaron, do you mind if I just pray with you? Um, and he, he, he offered for me to do that. And so I just told him the only thing is that he had to keep his eyes open while we continued the drive to the, to my church. And I just began to pray to God because I knew he believed in a God. So I prayed to God that he would give Aaron peace, that he would protect his family. And I prayed in the name of Jesus. And as he um, pulled over to the side to let me out, he told me one, no one had ever prayed for him in the car before. And then two, he said he had an overwhelming sense of peace. Well, Tom, you and I know that that peace only comes from Jesus Christ. But that day in the lift, Aaron got to experience the peace of Jesus Christ. Now, I didn't tell him my salvation story. He didn't find a parking spot and get out and come into church. But I do believe that I got to speak his language, a language that he was comfortable with. And all of that came from, and this is what's so amazing about who God is, all that comes from what happens in our lives as we connect to God through prayer and through his word. It's not intended to stay inside. It's intended to come out. And again, not perfectly, but it's amazing what is inside every believer. And God wants to use that perfectly, imperfectly, just as we are and with who he puts in our path. Shauna, the one powerful theme too that I see coming out of both of those stories is that as a believer, you took time to see the person that was near you, whether you were in the store, whether you were in a car and with an Uber driver, you took time to see them and listen to them. And the truth is so many people are struggling and going through things and they feel like they're invisible in this world. And when we get to see them, we have that opportunity to hear what God is saying and how to speak into their lives. So can you talk a little bit too about the place of the cross? Why is that important for us? Yeah, Anna, and I would just say for all of us, it's so important that just paying attention today, today, just pay attention to who God has in front of you. I just believe that this, this eye muscle, this attentive muscle grows on the daily. And so it's not that we have to you know, reach everyone in a given day. But I really do believe that the more we pay attention, the more God shows us and the more conversations he puts us in. But the place at the cross, and what I love so much about who Jesus is for every single one of us, the place at the cross 
it's a place that we keep going back and forth to. I know, yes, we came to the cross for salvation, but I believe that repentant people are receptive people, that we have to keep coming to the cross on a daily basis. And so it's not that we come to the cross for salvation, we're done, we never have to go back, our sins are forgiven, but rather it's a place that we get to continue to come to God, connect with Him. And I believe this speaks so powerfully to someone that is curious, that's skeptic, that's not quite sure that Jesus can love them. I think as Christians, we get to model this to the world that, hey, I continually have to come to God. I continually have to come to God for forgiveness, for repentance. And again, like I said, I think repentant people are receptive people. So it's just coming to the cross daily. And it's not this linear path between, okay, I meet people at the gate, I go to the cross, and then I go to the table. But it's this back and forth, a nonlinear path that we're taking between the gate, the cross, and the table on a daily basis. Shauna, what do you think happens to Christians and believers that do not share Jesus? Like ever, they, they don't care about it. They get in and out of the Uber car, they go in and out of Lowe's, they, and they don't think to stop and tell about Jesus. What do you think is happening there? Hmm. That's a good question. And I think it can vary for, for everyone. But when we are connected, if you have connected with Jesus today, just even thanking him for the air you breathe, for his word that we get to have here in the United States of America that, that feed our soul, that convict us, that tell us how to live. If we are connected with him, his Holy Spirit in us is going to prompt our hearts to connect with other people. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if we're connected with him mm -hmm. if we're not seeing others around us through the lens of Christ. So my encouragement to anyone who feels like, I, you know, I don't have this conviction. I don't have this prompting. I don't have this love and care for my neighbor. I would say, remember your story. Remember what Jesus has done for you. And if he's made a way for you, for your sins to be forgiven and for you to have a relationship with him, that alone should compel you and remind you of the love he has for you to tell that to someone else. So I would say to anyone who says, like, I don't have that love for someone else, I would say, remember what Jesus has done for you. And if you've never had that connection with Jesus of what he's done for you on the cross, start there. Shada, we're just so thankful for the encouragement that you give to us as believers to share our faith in very practical, relevant ways with those that we meet every day. So thank you so much for your book. Again, it is called Translating Jesus, How to Share Your Faith in Language Today's Culture Can Understand. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you, Anna. It's fantastic, right. fantastic. Uh, so good. You know, just that, I love that organic kind of nature of just living uh, our lives and walking with Christ and bringing Christ to others. In fact, we have a scripture about that right now we want to share with you. It's Colossians 4, verses 5 and 6, and it says this, Be wise in the way you act towards outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be always full of grace. Seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. Yes. Amy, how's that verse strike you? Well, I love it, you know, in the Amplified Translation, where it says that, um, that you're pleasant and winsome. So there's got to be something about your conversations that is winsome to the person listening. So it's not this aggressive, I know better, you're a loser, get your life in order. It's like... There's something likable about you that people just want to talk to you about, whatever. Last night we had church service, okay? And we're teaching, you know, on the Holy Spirit. And I didn't know this, but there was a guy in church that somebody had talked to in a Home Depot in the lumber department a year ago and said, you really should go to church. You know, Jesus loves you. And he said, I've got a great church you should go to. He said, for one year, I've been thinking, I need to show up at that church. And he came last night. You wow. just never 
No, when you're in those moments, when you're in Marshalls, you're, it, you're doing the everyday, you're in the giant eagle, wherever you go, just, just say, Lord, give me a divine connection today so that I can share the love of Jesus with people. It honestly is part of our responsibility as Christians. If you, if this is all about you and only for you and you're just, there's an old song called, you know, a fat, 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 fat little baby. That's what you are in Christ because you're supposed to give it away. It's not just all for you. Yeah, that's right. I think that's a key thing you said to, to ask the Lord for a divine connection while you go out in the day. I love the concept of just seeing people. When we are out and about, let's try to stay off our phones. Let's just be aware of those around us. Let's take time to look into their faces because the truth is so many are searching, so many are struggling and they're trying things that don't fulfill, they don't satisfy. And as believers, we know what fully satisfies and that is the love of Christ. Our lives are hidden in Him. So when we have the opportunity and the privilege to so tell somebody that Jesus loves them or to just to smile and be friendly and gosh, if we get the opportunity to, to hear what they're going through and then say, can I pray for you? What an awesome privilege that we have as believers of God. Absolutely, and I, I would just say that while it isn't always the easiest thing, it is something, and you may, you may even say, well, I'm not a minister, I don't know what to say. Well, just say Jesus loves you. My goodness, that, that, that is the, the, the easiest thing to say, and, and God will give you ways to uh, enter in and say that in a way that is effective in touching their life. But anything that you can do to show love and, and show Christ is a good thing. And Shauna in her book said, every human is one decision away from receiving Christ. So you just never know. And so I'm going to ask that you get uncomfortable this week, that God just shakes you up, gives you like, let's love what he loves. Let's be passionate about what he's passionate about. He loves people. He is passionate about people. Jesus loves you and we want you to know that today. And then we want you to take it to the streets. We want you to go public with this message so people can find hope today. On tomorrow's Hope Today, encouraging others to be the kind of change they want to see in the world. Author and pastor Greg Atkinson offers help to those who are struggling with unforgiveness and examines how kindness is the key to unlocking change in today's world. That's tomorrow on Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.